So um, yes, hello everybody, um, and uh, hopefully I'll be joined by my colleague um, Samita, um, who is uh, going to begin talking through um, some some of the uh, initial processes that we've gone through to to gain feedback um, in our in our healthier together, which is about five months old now five six months old um, and then I'm going to talk quickly about how we take that um, feedback on board um, as, as the project officer but also how we've kind of developed um, a process for how to deal with more clinical feedback um, and feedback from kind of within our system and our partners that that comes in uh, and that we've invited invited in so Samita are you ready to yeah Hello. And George, maybe you if you make your screen full screen, that would be great, or whoever's controlling the screen. I have done on this. Has it not come through? Not quite. It's still just a normal, but, but once again, no big deal. We can still see, see your slides, so it's all right. Right. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, George. Um, my name is Samitha. I am currently an SHO in paediatrics, and this is a, a project that I did, a little project that I did last year, where I had the opportunity to engage with and gather feedback from parents and guardians using the Healthier Together website. And if we go to the next slide. Is it not advancing? It's not. No, it's not actually. Right. Okay. That's so fine. I'll have, you, we'll have to go through it like this. It's clear. Yeah, if you just click on, click on number yeah. two. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. So, um, so we conducted a small project that aimed to explore how parents and guardians in the North Yorkshire region perceived the Healthier Together website that served the South Yorkshire and Bassett Law region. The feedback obtained would then influence the design of the new Healthier Together site that was being built to serve the Humber and North Yorkshire region. Um, as part of this small project, which was done over three months from December to February 2023, there were 15 qualitative semi-structured interviews conducted, each lasting around 20 minutes each. The parents and guardians who were interviewed were selected from the group of parents and guardians attending the Friaridge Hospital, um, Urgent Treatment Centre, IPEDS Day Unit or the Outpatient Department. All interviewees had children who had recently suffered from fever, coughs and colds, or difficulty breathing and wheeze. And as such, each parent guardian interview focused on reviewing the fever, cough and colds, and difficulty breathing and wheeze web pages on the Healthier Together web website. Um, so next slide, please. So the areas of the main areas for focus um, uh, for feedback on each web page were the when should you worry section, the what should you do section, and the how long will your child symptoms last section. Next slide, please. So starting with the feedback um, on the fever high temperature page, in general, all parents interviewed found the information suitable and they responded positively to the when should you worry section. And half the parents interviewed particularly appreciated how to take um, appreciated advice on how to take the temperature and commented that a scale representing normal versus worrisome temperatures would be uh, particularly useful to them. Um, it was also raised that most of the parents found the infographic on how long um, their child's symptoms would last quite confusing and difficult to understand. Um, Moving on to the cough and cold page. Again, all parents found the information provided appropriate and commented that they found links to videos of worrisome symptoms very useful. Majority of parents similar to those surveyed on fever, however, found the how long um, will your child's symptoms last um, section quite difficult to understand, um, owing to the um, sort of um, uh, the, the type of infographic used. Um, most notably, all parents that were interviewed on this section found the information rather simplistic and more suitable to first-time parents. Um, 
once it comes up in the notes section that everyone can read here, um, it's quite important to mention that all parents interviewed were either in, in healthcare themselves or under the follow-up of a specialist pediatrician. Um, and this may have made them a bit more health literate than the average parent or guardian. Next slide, please. Um, onto the difficulty breathing and wheeze page, all parents again uh, found the information suitable and praised the when should you worry section. Um, wheeze and difficulty breathing does have a wide differential, including asthmatic and non-asthmatic conditions. So parents of children with asthma or recurrent viral induced wheeze found the what should you do section quite inadequate and sought information on inhalers and asthma action plans. Some parents also felt too little information was provided on croup and bronchiolitis. Similar to the other two pa uh, pages, this came up as a common theme that parents found the infographic on how long the child's symptoms would last quite difficult to understand. Um, next slide, please. Overall, um, one third of parents um, uh, one third of the 15 parents surveyed felt that the information provided on the Healthier Together web pages would have changed their course of action. For instance, they might have chosen to stay at home instead of attending any, &E, or on the flip side, have identified a red flag symptom earlier and attended a &E earlier. Um, next slide, please. Um, so worth noting, this project definitely had some limitations. Um, there was a small sample size of parents surveyed. Um, interviews conducted were, uh, were conducted opportunistically and likely captured uh, a skewed sample. To improve the reliability of the findings, more interviews, um, focus groups will need to be conducted in other hospitals um, by other interviewers. I'll pass the mic back to George. Thank you. Um, so yeah, just very quickly to go over some some actions off the back of that. So so there obviously some changes to information provided has, has gone ahead um, and uh, some additional and swapped around bits of videos and, and graphics. And that works kind of ongoing as is kind of inviting feedback in from families and going on with some engagement work uh, on a larger scale um, as well in the future. Um, but as mentioned before, I think an important part of kind of what, what we wanted to talk about was also that we think it's really important to be inviting feedback in from partners and professionals as well um, and to get that feedback in um, and it became quite clear quite early on in the process of doing that that it would be very useful to have a policy and a process to allow us to take that feedback on board and deal with it in a way that was appropriate and meaningful. Um, so uh, we've got some sort of obvious things that you would have in line for, for a feedback process. Um, the ability for it to be submitted online, including an, an, an online anonymous sort of system, um, but also by emailing us uh, at a generic email address. And then we can kind of assess within that. What we wanted to be really clear about was that, that uh, the project officer, me, who would be dealing with this, wouldn't in an ideal situation be triaging that. So all, all that we've got is a clear definition between whether it's urgent or not urgent and clinical or not clinical. And then the policy kicks in, as we'll discuss there. And we, of course, we have a steering group that provides oversight over that process um, and a log that they then check um, uh, as things go through. So this is a, a rather extravagant um, flowchart. Uh, so I hope you can read it OK uh, on the smaller screen. Um, but essentially, for our clinical processes, um, we define urgent as something that is a dispute or a disagreement with the clinical content, something that requires a change and has very clearly in the, in the wording that something different needs to happen. Um, and non-urgent is something that's sort of an addition or a minor improvement or something that somebody wants to add um, to the text. Uh, so that the, the non-urgent is clearly dealt with fairly simply, that we have a list of proposed clinical changes that we sit on anyway. We add it to that list, we review it at the next available clinical leads meeting, um, and we, we make sure that's logged and, and it proceeds on like that. If it is urgent, then clearly we need to ask for evidence, check who has sent this in, um, contact all of the clinical leads as soon as possible and ask them to review that content within a set time period. Um, if we need to, we have the capacity to meet um, 
we also have the capacity to uh, make sure that somebody um, can meet with the person that's submitting the, the feedback um, so that they can kind of come to more of a, a clinical decision and a conclusion in there. And then they can make the, the, the suggestion to the project officer and we can deal with it from there. But for non-clinical feedback, um, this is a little bit more complicated in some ways and simple in others, that, that if it's a sort of suggested non-clinical correction, then clearly we don't need that to go through our clinical processes. Um, but, but if it's something that would create cross confusion, if it's a safeguarding risk, technical issue that's really systematically causing problems at the site, um, then uh, that is urgent and we will deal with that on the first day if possible. Things like phone numbers for crisis hotlines, stuff like that that we hold on the website, we thought it was really important that we had a, a process that said, you contact us, we will, we will sort it out. Obviously we'll verify that that information is correct. Um, and hopefully it should have come from the relevant local authority or ICB partner anyway, so it shouldn't need a great deal of checking, but, but that, that process exists. Um, and for other kind of more minor differentials and changes, um, then we have the ability for the project officer, the transformation team as a whole, uh, who, who in Humber and North Yorkshire run um, the Healthier Together website, uh, and that we then have the process to go through, go through this, check it, have a think. Um, uh, and and we may well go through, as I say, our, our program lead who will, will make that decision and come through there. That is us up. And if you would like to get in touch, those are contact details. Do, do feel free to do that. But we are there. Thank you, George and Samita. Lovely presentation. And, and thank you for talking us through your governance processes. But actually, Samita, really good to see this um, co-design parent feedback process you know as we saw with some of the young people's work it's really powerful it needs to be embedded into all of our programs I mean just because uh, young people in the north of England prefer pictures and young people from the south of England prefer cartoon images you know you know it's relevant to all bits of our website you know such as the how long do symptoms go on for so brilliant work um good that you're iterating immediately on the basis of that feedback um, and thank you I